think about are we there yet, you might be thinking something like this. I know I did when I first came up with this idea. I was thinking, are we there yet? And I can hear my kids going, are we there yet, Daddy? I need to go potty. Or I'm hungry. Or she won't get off my side of the seat. That one's my favorite, by the way. And you can probably think of some more. They're very similar to that. I know I could. We could go all day with that. But today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about three practical ideas from the book of James that can help you on your life's journey. If you take these things and you take them home with you and you apply them to your life, it's going to change it dramatically. So let's see what the, where the book of James is. A little bit about James. James is in the New Testament. It's between Hebrews and 1 Peter. So it's towards the end of the New Testament. It's five chapters long. So it would take you 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe tops to read it. It's a good read. It's about life. It's about how we are to relate to each other. It's kind of like a New Testament version of Proverbs. And in fact, I'm going to mix Proverbs in here when we're talking about the book of James when we go down the road. It was written, most scholars believe it was written by the half-brother of Jesus when he was one of the leaders in the church in Jerusalem. His name is James. It was written directly to the Jews. In verse 1, it says, to, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. So it was written directly to the Jews scattered all over the world, but it applies to us today as well. So let's, let's dig a little bit deeper into what the scriptures have to say. Man, it's great this thing works. It's awesome. So what does James tell us in the first part of the scripture reference that we're going to study? It says, know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of the man does not produce the righteousness of God. He says quick to hear. That's kind of an odd phrase. So what I want to do is I want to try to define what quick to hear is, and uh, it's a little bit easier to define what quick to hear is not. So that's what I'm going to start with. Okay, Captain James T. Kirk says, I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of how awesome I am. Or the little cartoon where the husband's talking to the wife, what are you saying? My inner voice drowned you out for a second. Anybody familiar with any of those? Oh, 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 a few hands, a few hands, a few hands. Okay, some other examples of what quick to hear is not, okay? Quick to hear is not quick to think of an answer before the other person has finished saying what they intend to say. Quick to hear is not Quick to cut somebody off because you have something totally awesome that you absolutely have to share, and you have to share it right now. I'm guilty. I am so guilty of those. And quick to judge. Quick to judge the other person for what they are trying to say before they finish saying it. Any of y'all are familiar with these? It's pretty simple stuff. But what does it mean? What it means what he says when he says quick to hear, he means slow down. Slow down and wait. Slow down and wait on God to listen to him answer your prayer. Slow down and wait on that other person to finish saying what they are trying to say because God may be saying something to you through them. You don't know. But if you interrupt, you'll never know. So quick to hear means slow down and wait. Proverbs 18.13 says, if one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. And Proverbs 12, 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. I like to think of the guy being quick to hear to look something like this. This gentleman, who has a very attractive beard, by the way, is trying to listen to what is going on? He's being very attentive. He's not talking. He's listening. I did a little Google search. Actually, I did an internet search uh, while I was preparing for the sermon. And I wanted to see what the world said about listening skills. So 
when I did that, I typed in listening skills. I got 19 million hits on Google, and I got 18.1 million hits on Bing. So it tells me that there's a lot of people out there interested in learning how to be better listeners. We all need that. We all need to be better listeners. But there's two sides to, the, to a conversation, isn't there? It's not just listening. It's also speaking. If there ain't nobody speaking, there ain't no hearing being done, right? So somebody's got to speak. And James has something to say about speaking, too. Before we get there, though, I want you all to think for just a second. I want you all to think about a time when you said something to somebody else without thinking it all the way through that made them furious, red hot mad. Okay, and then the other side of it, the other reverse. When somebody said something to you that made you furiously mad. Never. No, no, no. We never go there. All perfect. Ah, yeah. Okay. So let's look at the next part of this formula. So know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Some examples of not being slow to speak. I didn't want to pick anybody out of the crowd, so I found some announcements from other churches that were used in the church that were actually vocalized of people that weren't being slow to speak. I've got to put on my uh, announcer's voice real quick. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Applications are now being accepted for two-year-old nursery workers. Y'all got that one? Yeah, hey, you got that one? Okay. Don't let worry kill you off. Let the church help. <laughs> or, remember in prayer the many who are sick of our church and community. <laughs> and in my favorite, Weight Watchers will meet at 7 p.m. Please use large double door on the side of the building. <laughs> yeah. Are those good examples of not being slow to speak? I think they are. Proverbs 17, 28 says, Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. And Proverbs 15, 1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. I have... An extremely simple and effective way for you to remember how to be slow to speak. It is so easy. I think you guys can handle this when you take it home with you. It's called think. When you say, before you say something, think, is it true? Is it helpful to say it? I can hear my mama right now saying these things to me. Is it inspiring? Is it necessary, and is it kind? If you can answer yes to all of those, maybe it's a good thing to go ahead and say. If you have to say no to any of those, I see some wives popping on husbands going, yeah, 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 pay attention to this. If you have to say no to any of those, then maybe it's something you shouldn't say. That's not necessarily true. Maybe it is something that you really do need to say, but for the most part, if you can't say yes to those, it's probably something that you don't need to say. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> God, God tells us in the book of James and Proverbs to speak slowly because the next part of that formula of quick to hear and speaking slowly is, if you don't do these, is fast to anger. So James is telling us to slow down. And the last part of this is slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. A guy by the name of Alan Stanley, he's a pastor of North Point Community Church. Up, uh, I'm not exactly sure where it is, but he wrote a series called the Future Family Series. I used that with the men's Bible study for a, sh for a short period of time. And it has six videos. Uh, if you're interested in going and seeing those, you can see them online. They're really good and well done. Each one of them has a central theme of something about family relationships. And one of those is dealing with anger 
and arguing. Now I want you to think again. Think about those times when you got the most angry the fastest. Got that in your head? Okay, good. Now, what caused that anger to pop up? Think about that. All right, I bet if you dig down deep, I'm not a betting man, but if I was, if you dig down deep and you looked at that, that situation, there was something in that situation that you didn't get that you thought you should have gotten. Something. It might be somebody might have said something to you that made you angry. It might be somebody didn't do something that you expected them to do. It might be something like this. Boy, you will show me the proper respect. Or, you were driving so stinking fast, I was scared to death. Or, one of my favorites, because this happens in my house. You let the dogs tear up the trash can. There's trash everywhere in the kitchen. Look at my kitchen. It's destroyed. Right, guys? Yeah, look at them going. <laughs> anyway, so in those three examples, there was something in there that kind of stood out if you were listening real close. Respect in the first one. The dad who needed the respect from his kids that he wasn't getting. In the second one, the driver who was going so fast that it scared the other person, and they were scared. And in the third one, the mom or dad who walks in the house and sees their kitchen trashed out because the dogs tore up the trash, the kids didn't take care of it. Those are all examples, and if you think about it, just about every one of those anger sessions that you get into, you have part ownership in whatever it was that happened. The bottom line is we all get angry. And this lady, I thought she was very poetic in what she said. Anger is an emotion that makes your mouth work faster than your brain. How true. How true. That's why the second part of this formula was slow to speak. If you can do slow to speak, that anger will be slow to anger. But if you don't, that anger is going to take off and nail you. What does it mean to us today, though? Anger can make you say things that you wouldn't normally say. Everybody's guilty of that. I know I'm guilty of that. Proverbs 29, 11 says, A fool gives vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself from under control. Another thing your anger can do is that it can make somebody else angry. You get mad, the person you're talking to gets mad. You get mad because the other person is mad. They get madder because you got madder, and it escalates and it spirals out of control. It could. All related to anger and not being slow to anger. Ecclesiastes 7, 9 says, Do not be quick, quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the laps of fools. Another thing anger will do to you if you think about it, it might make you or want you, you might want to do something evil. You get angry enough, you get spiraled out of control enough, you might want to do something evil to that other person. If you're slow to anger, that doesn't happen. Psalms 37, 8 and 9 tells us, Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Now, be honest with yourself. Situation where you got steaming mad angry. I'll bet you God was not in the middle of that because your anger pushed God out of that God hole that everybody has built into them. You could not even sense God's presence and didn't even care because you were so angry. I've been there. I've done that. James talks to us a little bit about this too. That anger, that anger that you had did not produce the righteousness of God because God was not there. At least you didn't sense him. Back to Andy Stanley of North Point Community Church. He tells us to slow down as well in that video that he did. He said to look for the right reason 
Look for the reason why you got mad. If you're slowing down in your anger and you realize, I need to figure out why I'm mad, you're going to realize that part of the problem is you most of the time. And that if you can take partial ownership in this problem, this argument, this anger, then that can help soothe that savage beast within you that just wants to explode all over the place and have steam coming out your ears. All you got to do is slow that anger down and think about what the anger means. What part in it do you have? Proverbs 19.11 says, Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. All right, continuing to think about that anger issue that you had, that time when you were angry. I'll bet again that some colorful thoughts and maybe even colorful words came out of you when you were angry like that. I know that it's happened to me, at least the colorful thoughts. The colorful words are, I try to be more careful about that. James gives us an idea of what we should do about that. He tells us that we should clean house. He says, therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. And the Steve translation of that, it means clean out the filth and wickedness so that you can replace it with God's word. If you slow that anger down, if you hesitate and take time to make sure the microphone's in the right place. If you slow down and you take time to think about that problem, then you can put God back in the situation where he needs to be. If God's in that God hole that lives inside of you, that place that he set aside for himself inside of you, then your anger will be delayed. Your anger will be justified, possibly. Think about it a second. If James, what James is telling us is that as we deal with this anger, or as we deal with not being quick to hear, that we're trying to figure out what we need to say back to that person, we are separating our relationship with God. We're making it harder for us to be in relationship with Him. But if we'll slow down and take the time, then God can fill us and we can go on from there. The bottom line is we got a clean house, y'all. I'm guilty. We're all guilty. We got a clean house. We got to make room. And the last thing that James is telling us in this set of scriptures is just do it. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he looks like, what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. This is one of my favorite scriptures. That's why I picked it for today. But when I was thinking about the word just do it, I thought of shoes. I don't know how many of y'all know Nike, but Nike's had a big ad campaign for a bunch of years. And they may still, I don't know. But they had an ad campaign that said just do it. But before there was Nike, there was George McDonald. George McDonald, George McDonald lived from 1824 to 1905. He was pastor of Trinity Congregational Church in Scotland. And he wrote 45 Christian fantasy books. He was a mentor for C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. And to tell you the truth, before I researched this, I had no clue who this guy was. And I have not read any of his books. But I intend to go back and read them. But the quote that he had that I found online that says... Instead of asking yourself whether you believe or not, ask yourself whether you have this day done one thing because he said, just do it. 
I added the just, but y'all get the idea. Good old George is trying to point out that not only are we to be believers, but that we are to go out there and do what God has told us to do. Let's read that part again, because I really like the mental image that it has in it. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he looks like. What an awesome mental image. When you think about it, I don't like the way I look in the morning. I don't know about you guys. I mean, I got to get ready to go and all that. But in the morning, sometimes I'm not the most attractive person. But what he's trying to, James is trying to say here is that we're not to just read the word of God and then forget what is said. We're to read the word of God and to fill that God hole, that place within us with his word. James says, he's telling us that we should not just read his word, the perfect law in the second part there, but remember it and act on it, what we learned. Be a, uh, but a doer who acts so that we can be blessed in the doing. The bottom line is that since we are saved, we are supposed to spend time in his word absorbing his word and doing what we're told to do some people might say well he's trying to say we're saved through works but he never says that we are to just do it now i can't tell you what just do it means to you that's between you and god but as for me and my house we will serve the lord are we there yet? Nope. We're not there yet. We're still on the road. We're still working down that road until Jesus comes again. But if you've accepted Jesus as the, your master and you've given him everything that you are, then you are his. Those of you that haven't done that, you can join us on this journey. You can join us on this trip. All you have to do is believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, that he was resurrected, that his blood covers your sins, that he has gone to heaven and he's your attorney before God, telling God that your sins have been given to him and that he has already died for those sins for you. It's a simple process. It's as simple as think. Pray to Jesus. Pray to God. Lord God, I know you're a powerful God. I know you're an awesome God. And I want to give myself to you. Take the sins away from me. Please forgive me for those sins. I want to be your follower. And if you can do that, you can join us on this road, this journey that God has for us. It's an awesome journey. Join us. This week, y'all, I want you to practice. I gave you three things. Actually, four. One is quick to hear, which means slow down and listen to what the other person has to say. Slow down and listen to what God has to say. Slow to speak. Think before you talk. Slow to anger. Because, excuse me, because you're thinking before you talk then that will help you be slower to anger. Clean the filth out of your life so that God can fill that spot. That might be the toughest one of all. And the last two, guys, is I want you all to study God's Word like you've got to take a final exam on it. How many of you all took final exams recently? Not me. I've been out of school forever. There you go. It's tough. Study like you're taking a final exam on it. And then the last one is to pray. Pray that all these things that we've talked about this morning will come back to you during the week. Let's pray. Father God, what an awesome message that James gives us about taking time, just slowing down and resting in you, listening to your word 
listening as we pray, listening to your responses, being slow to speak so that others have an opportunity to share their thoughts and that we can absorb you through what they are saying. And Lord God, most importantly, help us clean that mess up that is inside of us. Open up that God spot. Make it so that you fill it up through prayer, through worship, through reading your word, through fellowship. Lord God, what an awesome thing when we can walk out of here full of you, ready to roll, ready to take that trip down that road in Jesus Christ's name. Okay, as we transition,